Well, Mitch, it's fantastic to see you. It's great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us on Good Morning Britain. Um, how has the face transplant changed your life? Uh, it's changed it considerably. I mean, it, it's a lot easier to go out in public and just do normal things that normal people would do. I mean, uh, before the transplant, I would get stared at, uh, comments made, and you know, all that. And it just wasn't fun. It just is so much easier to, to, to live a normal life, per se. How, how would you describe how you looked at, um, before you had the transplant after the accident? I always said I looked like a zombie. Like I, I could have gone on the, the set of The Walking Dead and been the lead zombie without makeup. I mean, the injuries were pretty extensive. We, we, we're looking at some pictures of, of, of your face before the transplant, and we can, we can see sort of what you're illustrating with your words there. Do you find it, and now though, Mitch, when you look in the mirror, and obviously you've got somebody else's face that's been extraordinarily transplanted, do you see yourself? Is, do you recognize mm. yourself? Uh, yeah, actually, I do. Like uh, a lot of my uh, a lot of my genetics show through. Like uh, your bone structure is what makes you you know look like you. And my bone structure really wasn't uh, injured that much, except for like the bridge of my nose. So I mean, I, I do see a lot of myself when I look in the mirror. Maybe not like I would look like at the age of 35 if the accident never happened. But you know, I do look like me. And have you seen photographs, Mitch, of the donor? And, and to, you, that must be an extraordinary experience. Uh, I, I have seen pictures of him. I, I've actually met his family. They're, they're, they're actually like my second family when I go to Boston. I always have dinner with them and hang out with them and stuff like that. You, you also um, uh, lost a leg in the accident mm. as well. To go through that extraordinary pain and, and mental trauma must have been some battle. How did you get through it? Uh, over time, just time and uh, painkillers. I mean, th th it was a lot of, of pain because, like, when they amputated the leg, I learned how to walk on it, and that, that was it was painful. So, it just over time, you know, the pain subsided, which I still get pain now, and I may get nerve and I get phantom pain and physical pain in it, but nothing nearly how it was when that first happened. And Mitch, do you remember the first time once once the swelling had gone down in your face? Uh, the first time that you could really appreciate that you could you could feel a kiss from maybe your child or the breeze on your cheeks and what what, what was that moment like oh i i absolutely i absolutely loved it i mean it was it was a, it was an amazing experience you know having such numbness for so long and then having all this sensation there it was it was very beautiful to say the least and how have your children reacted uh, they were actually pretty young when, when, when the transplant happened. They weren't even born yet for the accident. And they really don't even remember me looking like, you know, I did before the transplant. So they've actually reacted really well. Brilliant. Well, all the best with it. Um, you know, your situation, I'm sure you're probably still on anti-rejection drugs, you know, all the sorts of experiences that transplant patients uh, go through. Uh, it's fantastic to see you. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mitch. Mitch Hunter there. In thank, thank you for having me. Oh, it's great to see you. Extraordinary man.